Hey everybody, uh, thanks for stepping over here. I can't believe there's 500 people hanging out here. I know it's to be here with B&H. I just got lucky enough to have this spot. So, um, you know, we're gonna take a little bit of time talking about lighting and green screen lighting. Um, I'm gonna give you my own personal opinion. It's not that my opinion is the right decision or the perfect decision, because I think lighting is very personal. Um, you discover through your mistakes, Nothing's ever wrong until it becomes the style everybody copies. So um, we've got this great opportunity to talk to you about a very simple scenario. A good, good friend here from Vitek, Penny, is uh, sitting in as our model. And um, we kind of walked into this studio setup, which is being used for a lot of different interviews. So one of the things I think we want to key on first, no pun intended, in green screen is that sometimes what's happening is the best thing to use once you walk into a location. So we're inside the hall here. We've got a lot of overhead work lights on. We've got some um, artificial light drifting in from a window further down. You guys have got to see this setup at B&H. It's unbelievable. Every piece of equipment that you can imagine or want is laid out with these uh, product specialists. It's really a great environment. And if my voice is drawing it closer, that's a good thing. The idea with green screen, there's digital and there's chroma. Hey, Jimmy. And with digital, it's highly reflective. So the amount of light you actually need should be less. And in chroma, there's a density to it, which actually, for a lot of people, especially years ago, was more about the reflective value not contaminating the skin a reflective angle, just like if you were shooting cars. You put the light as a reflective source to see the car instead of a direct source into it and having a hot spot. So one of the things that we wanted to try and impress is it's not always the location that's going to dictate, or sometimes it is. In this case, it is the case of very small setup, a lot of ambient light, a lot of studio lights. Can we just turn off all the lights that are lighting us right now from the trusses? Now, one of the great things here is Steve, who's incredible, and he's on the camera and the mixers, um, taking advantage of what the camera's capable of. A lot of times, you can raise your ISO, it's light sensitive, you don't need a lot of light. It's kind of the new world where it's really where you put the lighting source, not so much how much it's emitting. So I can't see the screen because of uh, the guys are looking up, but hey, Steve, is it a thumbs up that we actually see myself and we see our great sit-in Penny here? Okay, so in a case like this, let's try something crazy because I'm from a lighting company and we obviously want you to all come to our booth and see our lights, but let's see what we can get away with just ambient top light. Can you try and pull a key with what's here? Let's see what happens. You know, this is what live TV is about. And the TV happens to be the computer screen or, or mobile device you're watching on. It's a great world. I'm so grateful to be a part of it. 35 years of lighting. We started light panels many years ago in my garage uh, to see all these people coming for the same thing, which is information, information, information is great. So are we getting some clipping on the screen? We're getting a lot of clipping. OK, so great. This is what we wanted to do. We wanted to take a unfamiliar environment, not the perfect lighting conditions, and see what we could do by slowly, hey, you know what? TV makes you look so much taller. I'm actually 5'7", but I'm going to be 5'9 in November, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, let's add, let's add, oh, I can see the screen now. Can we add the Astra that is rigged into your setup? So we're going to turn on one light source. Basically, it's directly over camera. Has that helped with um, seeing Penny? Obviously, we've got some nice front light. Remember, front light is very complimentary. It's pretty hard to improve perfection, but we can always add and try. So with this front light, you guys have heard this before. I, I've got, it's great to do a show here live. Um, I can use some of my oldest stuff, right, Jimmy? So are we getting better on the keying? with this one light. Hard for me to see. I'm looking for a thumbs up, thumb sideways. 
I got one thumbs up, do I see two? Two thumbs up, two thumbs up, go on, three thumbs up, three thumbs, four, five. Okay, so we've improved the image with just one light. So it's the positioning of this light that's really made a difference in keying. It's centered on the set. It's approximately over the top of camera, which is, again, a complementary angle. Now, I'm going to ask for, um, just to make sure, Penny, I know you're exerting a lot of energy up there. Are you, are you all right? Any water or something? You're all right? OK. So what we want to do now is look at the opportunity to just enhance what's already happening with one light, some top light. Skin tones and colors. You're using a TriCaster, right, Steve? It's a great product. A lot of opportunity with that. Um, let's take a, a brick. Alan, do you have um, the brick? OK, so we're going to run on batteries. And I'd go grab it myself. Come on in. No, come on, to get in the camera. Anybody wants to help. It doesn't matter. Thanks. So this is our brick. It's a bicolor unit. And the reason I wanted to bring it in, it's, it's in regards to talking about using something simple. If I wanted to be soft and complementary, do you see a difference on the face? A little bit of fill. Maybe it's too much. I'm soft right now. I can back it out a little bit. And I'm just looking for expressions. Thumbs up, Jimmy. You're the man. Thank you. Because I'm kind of lighting blind. It's kind of an oxymoron, but go with it. So the idea is that you're seeing with just adding something as a supplement to be more complimentary, uh, we've done it. Um, I can also be, depending on the background, I can add something as far as a side element. I could, if the microphone allowed me, I could step around the back and actually use this as a backlight. You can notice the, the overall eye lighting on the side of her from this angle. If I was to go further back and put some edge to it, I'm going to get a little more separation. But what's interesting, I think, is the fact that I don't have any backlight. I'm not really sure what the separation looks like, but it looks, it looks good. It could use a little hair light, I think. Alan, could you put that camera down and come over and give me a hand? Yeah, thank you. Clapping. You got to love it. And uh, just take this light here, if you wouldn't, and just act as a backlight on Penny. And we're not using the light at its full intensity. We've got a soft diffuser on it. Because if you add some light as an element, a back edge, a backlight, a side light, you're trying to mimic something that's happening in the background. So the softer or more forgiving you are with whatever elements you're adding lighting-wise gives you a little bit more freedom in as far as it looking to a match. So that, to me, just looking at her head but not looking at her, looks like it's a little too bright. So maybe you could go more towards where you are, Alan, with the light source. Yeah, somewhere in there. Now, I, on, on women especially, I don't like to bring the light around too much to light the side of their nose or their cheeks. I like to let the hair cut it from the cheeks and the nose. And how's this looking as far as the background separation? You know, separation is everything, and a lot of times you can find it in the environment. In this backdrop, there's night sky. Um, if we wanted to emulate the high-rise building in the background, maybe that light would actually come from the other side of frame as if light from that beacon on the building was actually giving her a reflective value in her hair. Does that make sense to everybody? Wow, it is amazing how many people are here. There must be 100 people in this booth. It's incredible. You guys got to come down and check it out. Not because I'm here. I'm just tall enough that I can see over everybody to count them. So the idea with this is, again, it's more about being very selective with the light you have. I think a big challenge for a lot of people, and if you want to rest your hands or arms, you can. I think the challenge is most people are of the mindset that I'm going to go in, and I'm going to light the green screen. And I'm going to light it perfectly even. And I'm going to make it a four and a half so that I'm in the middle of the lens. But the challenge then becomes now you have to light the talent. And as you can imagine, talent is just like a matchstick. There's only this much that the light's hitting. The rest of it's going beyond it. So if you're a three-quarter front king, some of that light's going to go on it. If you're front filling, some of that light's going to go on the talent and then onto the screen. So why would you light the green screen first? Actually, light the talent at an acceptable stop. 
And then you can go ahead and figure out what you need to add to the background green screen to give it some life. Now, who out there has a contrast eyepiece in their pocket around their neck right now? You must all be cameramen and your first assistants carry it for you. So um, what I like to think of is everybody's got a contrast glass in regards to their smartphone. When it's in the off position, there's a piece of glass in front of a black screen. That becomes your contrast. You can actually look into the screen and back at your set, and you will see basic contrast. So if you're questioning the levels on your talent to your green screen, just look back at your phone. Isn't Penny lovely? That's what I'm seeing, first of all. And I see my green screen, and I can see, OK, it's falling off a above her head in the background because the light's actually aimed at her. But if we look at the mat that we're pulling, it just needs a little bit of love. So maybe we add something to that area if we need it. And so I've gone from lighting three lights into the green screen to light the green screen, and then two to three or four lights for the talent. We're at a point where we're at one or two lights. Now, I know that may upset some people because um, they feel that their way works much better. And, you know, this microphone's going to be free in about six more minutes. So anyone that wants to is welcome to come up and offer their lighting tips. But I think the reality of it is, if you take the time to try simplicity, you sometimes find simplicity is the best. Wouldn't you agree, Penny? Oh, she spoke. She's SAG now. We've got to re-sign the contract. There you go. Um, I think one of the other things, can you? Yeah, let me have that for a second, Alan. Um, you know, something like the brick, which is portable. I'm going to try and keep it tipped down so I don't flare the. Does everybody know the difference between a highlight and a flare? It's about $10,000 a week. I'll be here all week, folks. Come on. Come on back. Um, the idea was something portable or battery operable. And we've got a lot of products for on camera and off over in our booth in the Vitech booth. Light panels is a part of Vitech. The idea is that you can use small portable lighting in a lot of different configurations. This light that I'm not flaring the lens with can actually be used as a bounce source, especially I'm working at lower light levels. It can be used as a direct source. Uh, Penny, cover your eyes. Um, if you're doing a thriller and you want some low light. Or I can add softness to it and create a nice up light, chin light, fill light, complementary light. And I can adjust the output, just like on an Astra Soft, with this color changer and this potentiometer, dimming it. Now, let me show you something about the Astra Soft, because this is kind of about the Astra Soft. And I got about four minutes, and I'd like to show it. Could you grab the, uh, oh, you know, we'll keep it within a time frame. The, the best part about the Astra Soft Come to B&H, talk to the specialists. They're all specialists. They have the Astrosoft. They can give you insight. The idea with it is just as I showed you with this softness, a lot of times it's not how much light you have, it's where you put it. And a soft light in a lot of today's shooting is something that you can, you can put in a position that is complementary, gives you plenty of light, dim it down, change it. That's kind of what we're doing with what uh, the guys here have rigged beforehand. Um, do you have any questions coming in from the thousands of people following this on the stream? Too many to answer right now. I get it. I understand. There's somebody else coming up to speak. Are there any questions from the audience? Those of you that have been here 15 minutes waiting for me to do this presentation, any of the hundreds? Yes. My favorite light is the right light for the right job. I think that um, in all practicality, there's many tools. You know, if you think about starting off uh, as a wanting to do carpentry, you're going to start off with a set of gloves because they're going to make you carry everything. And hopefully by carrying it, you're going to realize what it is and how it's used. And as time goes on, you get a tool bag, you get a hammer, you get a chisel. You build up tools to fit your needs and your desires. And I think that's why everybody's here at NAB. 
every manufacturer, uh, every software company. They're here to give you an opportunity to kick the tires. Find out if you want to make it part of your arsenal. Um, I tell you, Penny is just a chatterbox. She hasn't stopped yelling things into my ear. She's a ventriloquist by training. That's why it looks like she hasn't said anything. Um, any other questions? Great. So uh, how's that background still look? Good? One light. One light to light the talent. A little extra for some fill if we need it or as a backlight. Let's bring that in and show them what we're using. Ladies and gentlemen, Alan. Alan's our brand marketing manager. A lot of knowledge of the product. This is, uh, this is an Astra EP, battery operated. But basically, that's what we're using with a honeycomb on it up above to light the talent. And my surly position here standing in front of the stage. Um, a 12-inch square of light put in the proper position, which happened to be hung. Well done. Um, in its position, it's made a big difference. And this is the reason why we put a green screen up in this environment to see how we could address pulling a good key in an unusual situation and have it actually look good. So I want to thank everybody for their time. Um, I want everybody that's within the sound of my voice to realize if it's loud, you're where you should be in the B&H area. If it's faint, I want you to come towards this loud voice. Come and experience the people here with B&H. Come and experience all the great products, not just light panel products, but a lot of products. And take the opportunity to talk to people about it. There's nothing like kicking the tires and trying something. So you know it's going to become part of that toolkit I was talking about. So without further ado, Penny is going to sing the national anthem. Oh, she says no, she forgot her guitar. All right. The one thing we want to remember, have fun today and all week. Everybody's a friend. We're all in this collectively together. One spirit, creative image capture. Peace. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, b &H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.